Incredible acts of heroism during a tragedy. The story of the Titanic's legendary Chief Baker. As the RMS Titanic began to sink during the freezing cold early morning hours of April 15, 1912, Chief Baker Charles Jockin knew he wouldn't survive. Instead of going into a state of panic, he spurred on the other chefs to help him pack food and supplies into the lifeboats. And when this task was done, he then helped women and children board lifeboats, eventually throwing those who refused to leave the doomed ship into the boats to ensure their survival. He also heaped deck chairs overboard, hoping that those who couldn't make it into the lifeboats had something to cling on to. Jockin is believed to have been the last person to leave the Titanic, gripping the safety railing as the ship sank into the negative 2 degrees Celsius water of the Atlantic Ocean. The Baker spent almost three hours in the sea before being rescued, suffering only swollen feet. He also ingested a copious amount of whiskey before going down with the ship, which is thought to have warmed his body enough to withstand the frigid temperature. After surviving the Titanic disaster, he returned to England and was one of the crew members who reported to testify at the British Wreck Commissioner's inquiry into the sinking, headed by Lord Mercy. Then in 1920, Jockin moved permanently to the U.S. to Patterson, New Jersey, and according to his obituary, he was on board the SS Oregon when it sank near Long Island in 1886. He also served on ships operated by the American Export Lines, as well as the World War II troop transports before retiring in 1944. After moving back to New Jersey, he remarried to Mrs. Annie Eleanor, a native of Leeds, a city in West Yorkshire, who had first come to the United States in 1888. Annie was a widow twice over and had a daughter named Rose, born in 1891. Annie's death in 1943 was a great loss from which he never recovered, and 12 years later Jockin was invited to describe his experiences in the chapter of Walter Lord's book, A Night to Remember. Soon afterwards, his health rapidly declined, and he would pass away at a Patterson hospital on December 9, 1956, after two weeks with pneumonia, and he was buried alongside his wife in the Cedar Lawn Cemetery in Patterson, New Jersey. He was 78 years old. And to say that he lived an eventful life would be an understatement. Thanks for watching, and remember if it's more interesting, you can find it here.